Hey there, it's Taryn back with some more information on Helinox Chronicles. Uh, I was getting ready to play through a playtest and figured I'd just film some of my first turn, show you a little bit about how the actions work. This is a little further into the game than I've shown in most of the videos that I've done. Uh, this is actually episode four, as you can see, represented by the opponent card here in the middle. I did change up the way that the opponents work um, and the way that the threshold works. If you've watched some of the other videos, or read any of the rules. Um, this is a little bit different now. Um, actually, you can see this threshold card will go into the resolution deck uh, when certain things happen. Certain things will put that into the resolution deck. And it'll do a bad thing when it does that. So in this case, it's going to score a bunch of operatives from the market over here. Uh, but at the end of the game, these actually have other bad effects that will trigger if they happen to be in the resolution deck. And one of the reasons that I wanted to have this is because uh, I wanted some end game scoring, some kind of hidden scoring for the opponent during the game. So that's been kind of a fun aspect to play around with. Um, as far as the actions go, you can see I did update the command center or the player board, which is this right here. Uh, the actions are still here across the middle, all outlined in yellow, uh, starting with the lead action over here and going around. Each one of these does something a little different. I won't go into too much detail on them. In fact, I'll probably just go ahead and play a turn and sort of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, a little bit about the turn structure uh, and then about the round structure and then about what I'm calling eras. So on your turn, and I have this set up for a solo game. Uh, so solo players will have three action selectors. That's these three dice here. Uh, and after you place all of those, you will roll them. In multiplayer games, you'll only be using two of them. So you wouldn't be using this green one. You'd only be using these two. Uh, this is a solo specific die. Uh, so in multiplayer, two through four players, you'll only use the two dice. So you'll have two actions before you roll dice. Uh, bad things always happen when you roll dice. So that's what the, that's what the dice are all about. But you don't roll them to place them. You just... Choose what you want to do, and you can choose any one of them. It doesn't matter what face is up. And then you choose one of these actions, and you just put your die on it to indicate that you've done that action. Um, additionally, on your turn, you can always play cards. And I have my, my opening hand right here laid out. Um, and you usually start by playing your cards, although some cards you may or may not want to play. Um, I have cards marked with this little lightning bolt symbol that you see down there in the right corner of that. Those are cards that are not going to affect any other players. So when I play this, I just drop it down, and that's going to give me a cred. Whenever I get a cred, I take my little marker here, and I mark it on um, the cred defense tracker up here at the top of my player board. Okay, so in my opening hand, and again, this I can do this. Players can all do this simultaneously if you're playing multiplayer, um, or if you're just playing solo, of course. you can. So you can just play out. If it just gives you cred or defense, defense is these sentinel prototypes, then it doesn't really matter. You can just play them. Uh, this gives me one defense, and I actually have four cred off those, so I'll go ahead and mark those. And uh, one defense, so I use this cube here. Now I'll have the one defense, okay? And then I also have this other card. Lots of times when I play stuff, if it's actually out of my hand, I'll just kind of turn it to the side. And then I have this one card left to play. Um, this card, you can see it doesn't have the lightning bolt, and that just means I can only play that card on my turn which in solo, of course, doesn't matter. Um, in multiplayer, that would potentially matter uh, because consume is something that you can do that affects areas that other players can get, can have access to. Uh, for instance, you can consume a card from the market. Now, lots of times you're gonna consume cards from your hand or from your played area. So all these cards that I just played, I can play this uh, removal unit and consume one of these cards I just played. I'm gonna just actually consume one of these uh, not that one. I'm going to consume this one, uh, this material asset, because it only gives me one cred. It's not a very good card. So I'm just going to trash that and put it in my consume pile over here. Here's my, here's my consumed cards over here. Um, and then that card is also played. That also gave me a cred. So I moved my cred counter up there. And now I've played all the cards in my hand. Now that's all the cards that I'm going to have for this entire era. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what an era means uh, here in a second. So that's part of my turn. I haven't chosen an action yet. I can play all those things for free. I don't need to choose an action to do that. Now, my turn looks like this. So I still have to choose an action. 
And lots of times at the beginning of the game, especially in solo, if you have any defense, which I have one, you're going to want to take out these events as fast as possible because these events are going to do bad things if they're sitting on the board because every time you roll these dice, some of these events might trigger. So you can um, choose the protect action, which is that second action right there. And again, take any one of your dice, put it on the action, and then I am protecting. And you can see there's, there's three different things that you can do with protect. I have them kind of separated with that line there. Uh, you can spend defense to engage events. Well, that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, the other things that you can do when you protect are you can sped, spend cred or defense to engage with the presence, and that's the opponent's presence, and that's this uh, fascinating little ship that I have up here. I'm just kind of messing around with different prototype pieces. I don't know what the final version of these ships are going to look like, but they're going to be something cool. Uh, hopefully we'll get that upgraded as a stretch goal. I don't know exactly, but right now it's just a little token. It kind of floats. I got a little base on it so that it stands up over and it, and it just represents that it's the opponent, uh, the opponent's presence is actually over here on Mars. And um, so if I want to engage with the opponent, I would have to go to Mars. Now, there are things that make the opponent move, so that's why he's on that little ship base. So I'm not going to engage with him right now. And the other thing that you can do is you can spend credit and defense to clear devastation. Uh, there is no devastation in on the board at the beginning of the game. So in this case, I'm just doing a protect and I'm only doing one thing. I'm spending my one defense that I have and I'm going to overcome this event. Now you can see the event here has an X up in the corner. That tells me whatever the player count is in the game, that's how much that event is going to cost to overcome. Uh, you can see all of the events are the same. They all have an X on them. That's telling, that's telling us that each one of these events in a solo game takes one defense to overcome. So when I overcome it, I score it. I just put it up here in my uh, score area and I actually get whatever the player rewards are. And I'm actually doing a couple things here. I'm actually denying the opponent some points because the opponent will score any events that are left on the table at the end of the era. And I'm also getting some points. So I'm getting a little bit, I'm getting one influence. You can see that. So I increase my uh, influence, that's points, victory points. Uh, this is my tracker up here across the top. That's the opponent tracker right there across the bottom. And then additionally, I also get one mark. So that's uh, these guys. And marks, you can just kind of put them over here on your, your player board or wherever you want. Uh, you can store those up and you can use those on different turns. They act similarly to cred, except they can only be used to buy cards in the market. Cred can do other things besides buying cards in the market. Uh, you can see the cost in creds up here in the upper right corner of all the market cards. Um, and so I could spend that as if it were a cred to buy cards in the market. I'm not going to do that just yet. That's a different action. But I probably will before the end of this era. Okay, so that was my first action. That cost me this one die. I still have two more dice I can play um, for my first turn of the first era of the game. So let's see. So next I would probably, I need to think about moving or trying to get some more defense. Um, I also have a good amount of money. Um, there is some stuff I could do with money, uh, putting some cards into my hand. In fact, that's actually a pretty cool idea. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, uh, especially since I just got this extra mark here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the invest action. That's this one right here. And there's a bunch of different things that you can invest in. You can see the protect and the invest actions. Those are the two most complicated actions on the entire uh, command center. Most of the stuff's pretty straightforward, but both protect and invest have three different things that you can do when you do it. And you can do all of them or any number of them or one of them multiple times. For instance, with invest, uh, it says you can buy cards, spend cred or marks to buy cards. Well, I can spend any amount of cred and any amount of uh, marks to buy any number of cards. And that's one thing that I can do. I can also uh, put down buildings, which are these little slots that I have here. And I did not put my buildings on my command center yet. So I'll grab those because those are supposed to be on there at the beginning of the game. They actually go into what's called my staging area. Uh, there we go. Staging. And you can set, it doesn't matter which slots those go into. And you can play those however you want. 
So I could build those, two cred each to build buildings. And then the other one is this one right here that I could just buy keys and fuel. Again, I can tell you a little bit more about those um, on a future video probably. I'm not gonna get any of that stuff right now. Right now I'm just gonna buy cards. Now generally, again, I would just pay that amount right there. Um, but here's a little spoiler. If you don't want any spoilers for the game, this is a campaign-based game, it's not legacy. But it is a campaign-based game, so there are different components that you'll unlock as you go through the game. Uh, this component that I'm about to show you is not in the game for the first three episodes. It only starts in this episode, which is episode four. So if you don't want to see any spoilers, go ahead and turn the video off right now. If you do, stay tuned. Here we go. All right, moving on. Uh, this is what I'm about to show you. This is called Overspend, and I have this one little Overspend token, which again, I get in episode four, and I can actually spend that token once per era, I just flip it over, and now I can spend extra, if I spend one cred extra, I can get a card and I can put it directly into my hand. Generally, when you get cards with the invest action, they go on top of your deck. In this case, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna spend five cred, so I'm going to do one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to spend four cred, and I'm going to spend this one mark that I just got. That goes back into my mark pile there. And now I'm going to buy this Cerberus Titan. Now, this guy is really powerful, uh, will give me some defense, and he gets to go straight to my hand because I used the overspend. Uh, the only bad thing is you see that little red number there, that number surrounded by red. That is infamy, and that is going to be points for the opponents. Most of the cards, well, some of the cards at least, uh, will have points in green, and that's points for players when you buy them. Uh, this card in particular is pretty cheap for its power level. So I'm going to get that card, and that's going to go straight into my hand. Now this card is going to do a couple of things. Again, this is a more advanced card, and a spoiler card, because this one is not even available until episode four. So again, if you're not looking for spoilers, you might not want to watch this. If you're just excited to see some of the new mechanics in this game, then this is this is the video for you. Uh, this one gives me, when I play it, and again, I can play cards on my turn. They don't cost me any actions. I can play this, and it will give me three defense. So I'm all the way up to three defense now. Additionally, you can see this card will give me a free action. And free action means I can do any one of these things in yellow without putting a die on it. So I can just choose one to do. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to choose this procure action. It says exhaust all the buildings at my location uh, and gain their benefit. And the cool thing is I don't have to place a die on it because I'm using my Cerberus Titan uh, free action to do that. Now you can see I have two buildings on my location. And the reason I have those buildings, I actually started the game with those because of the architect that I'm using. Uh, this is something that you choose at the beginning of the game. And this is host R1v3r, and she starts with two buildings. That's what these little icons are right here. Uh, you can see your starting location. Her starting location is Europa, and she starts with these two buildings, uh, which is actually pretty powerful. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of um, options as far as her cryo abilities go, which are the things down at the bottom there. Uh, I might explain those later in a different video. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and activate these buildings. And these, these buildings are, are really fun. Again, more spoiler alerts. Lots of spoilers in this one. But, you know, I figured it was time to show everybody this kind of stuff. Uh, this one, when you flip that over, it will immediately give you one defense. So I'm up to four defense. This other one has a card draw on it. So I flip that over, and it lets me immediately draw a card off the top of my deck. Now, Cerberus Titan is played, so I'm going to put him into my play area. These cards don't go into your discard pile until the end of uh, the era, actually, so just remember that. That's, uh, that's important for some things. Um, and the card I drew, it's not a great card, just another material asset, but it does give me another cred, and I didn't spend all my cred, so I'm back up to two cred and uh, four defense, which is really nice. So, again, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm probably not going to do too much more, but I did want to show you a couple of actions. So that was a few actions. Um, the invest action, the protect action. I actually did the procure action to use those buildings. Now I do have one die left, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this one turn and show you what happens at the end of a turn before I end this video. Um, let's say that, so 
probably over the course of this era, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go hunt down that opponent because I have a bunch of defense and I can use defense to fight against the presence of the enforcers, which are right there. Uh, so, but I'm not going to do that just yet uh, because if I were to fly over there, I only have one action left before I have to roll these dice. And sometimes when you roll the dice, that will make the opponent move. So if I make the opponent, if I fly over to Mars and then the opponent moves, I might not be able, I might not have enough money to fly again. So uh, for my last action, I'm actually just going to choose this lead action, and that's going to let me activate my architect. Uh, to activate an architect, put some cryo counters on it, uh, equal to the cryo ability that you choose. Uh, River or R1V3R only has uh, three, um, only has one ability that takes three cryo counters. So I put put the three cryo counters on her, and that gives me three marks, which can be super nice uh, for buying some more cards later. Now, I can't overspend again to get the card to my hand, but I do have those to spend later in this era. So, uh, that's my three actions. So, what happens after you use all of your actions for a turn, you pick up the dice, you roll the dice, and then some bad stuff happens. Um, in this case, let's see what all I got here. So in this case, oh, this is a, this is a pretty, this is a pretty, uh, could be a bad roll. Let's see. So this one says that the market gets devastated. So the dark colored die is for market stuff. Again, the market is over here and that one's going to devastate. You can see the little, um, uh, orange and blue symbol there. You find that on whichever market that is, that's going to be the cyber market, and that's going to devastate that market. Now, a devastated market, um, it's not the end of the world. I can still buy cards from it and things like that. Uh, however, if there is any devastation on here at the end of the era, then the opponent will score those market cards. Um, additionally, I rolled Europa, which, thankfully, I already got rid of the event. If this event... This was the event that I uh, just defeated or just uh, overcame. If that event had been here, it says devastate all locations with outbreak. That actually would have been really bad. You can see this event is an outbreak event. There's also an outbreak event on Mars. And there's one over there on Earth. So that would have been pretty crazy. I would have actually had to devastate three locations from this one thing. But fortunately, I overcame that event. So that doesn't go off. And actually, nothing happens here because there is no event here until the beginning of the next era. Uh, the third action that I rolled, or the third um, symbol that I rolled, was this one. And this is actually the opponent's presence symbol. I actually, oh, I got some new cards printed that actually have that icon on there. This card doesn't, but I'll print those up, or I'll get those cut and using those soon. But anyway, that's what it does. Uh, when you activate the opponent, when you roll it on a die, uh, what it does is it... You take a look at the plot card here. This is the, the opponent plot card. And down here at the bottom, it tells you the starting location, which is this one over here on the left. So that's why the opponent started there on Mars. And then when you roll the die, you can move to the next one in the, in the series here. So in this case, it is series. Uh, so it goes from Mars to series. So pick up the ship, fly it over here to series. And now the opponent is attacking here. And what happens is... Um, when the opponent moves to a new location, they devastate that location. So I always just drop a devastation token on top of the key access area because uh, devastation will actually make it so that you can't use key access. And again, that's similar to how things worked in older, um, in the deluxe edition and in the last sunset. Uh, it also uh, limits use of buildings. Now I don't have any buildings here on series, fortunately, but if I had had some buildings, I would have to get rid of that devastation first before that. So now there's some devastation to clear. There's some other things to work on. And I, I would go back to continuing my turn. I would keep playing my three dice until basically there's nothing left that I can do. And I would choose that reflect action over here uh, when I am done. And when I'm done, I don't have to roll dice anymore. So I can just put that onto the reflect and I don't have to roll dice anymore. But otherwise, I, I keep rolling dice after every three uh, actions that I choose, and that's a turn. So the era will end after all players have chosen Reflect. So again, in a solo game, when you choose Reflect, that's the end of the era. Then at the end of the era, potentially, lots of bad stuff happens. The opponent will score all these events out here. 
hopefully by the end of this era, I would have a chance to clean up a lot more of those. And the opponent will also score any of these devastated markets. And then if the opponent is still in play, which in this case it is, it would also score end of era three points for that, three infamy. Um, but you can overcome the opponents as well when you overcome them. You flip them over like this. And then at the beginning of the next era, they will come back out along with a whole new set of events. Um, there's a little bit more to that, but I won't go into that in this video. Um, but that's a pretty good overview. Again, this is a this is more of a, a deeper dive into uh, the game than I've previously gone into. But I did want to show you a few of these um, newer mechanics and uh, a few of the things that are happening in this game because I know there's some some people really excited to get this one on their table. Um, hopefully, coming to Kickstarter. Hopefully in November. Um, still a couple things that I'm waiting on to uh, verify that, but we'll see. It, sh it should happen in November. I'm fingers crossed November. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching this and um, I look forward to playing this with you soon. Maybe we can play it on Tabletopia uh, in the next few weeks or, or month or something like that and um, definitely be showing it off a lot more on the upcoming Kickstarter. All right, thanks.